If you have a Bible with you, open up to the New Testament book of Philippians, Philippians, and get to chapter four, Philippians chapter four. If you don't have a Bible with you, we have everything for you in the church app. Uh, you can just grab our church app, go to the take notes section, and I'll have everything there for you. I'll bring a bunch of verses up on the screen as well. We're going to look at just two verses from Philippians. Uh, we've been in a series called How to Be Rich, and that was from the Apostle Paul. This book is written by the Apostle Paul as well. In fact, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, and Philippians is one of those books. And here in chapter 4, these two verses are arguably the most famous words ever written by the Apostle Paul. And so today is just a one standalone, one-and-done teaching series, and next week we'll begin a new three-part series. But today we're going to look at verse 12 and 13, Philippians 4, verse 12 and 13. Let me read these two verses to you, and then we're going to walk through it one bite at a time. Philippians 4, 12 and 13, Paul writes, I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, all right, some of you forgot breakfast, all right, you're like, uh, empty, yep, that's you right now, uh, with plenty uh, or little, and he says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. This is God's word, and we believe his word is active, it's alive, it will change your life if you allow it to. And so we're gonna look at just these two verses. Here's the part we're gonna start with. Uh, the phrase that, is, uh, that Paul begins with certainly grabs our attention. Paul writes, I have learned the what? Everyone say it with me. I've learned the, yeah, I've learned the secret. And you may not admit it, but you love secrets. Uh, it actually goes all the way back to the very beginning. Even as a child, I loved being let in on secrets. Uh, I remember my first secret that I was really excited about. It was when I was playing Nintendo. And there was this game that came out. It was the best game, the game of Contra. Anyone remember this game? Yeah, 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 that's right. It, yes. And uh, I remember when I got the secret passcode for Contra. And uh, you just entered these different things on the remote controller and like you wouldn't die on the video game. And it was amazing. I felt so special to be let in on that secret. Uh, high school, it wasn't a video game. It was more of a secret handshake that kind of let me into the cool club and then I knew it and I, and I loved the hallways and seeing those buddies of mine, we would do our, our secret handshake. In my 20s, it changed uh, into kind of some secret tactics on how to get a date and uh, I used that on my wife, now wife Kelly, which is once you get their number, you do not call them for about four to five days. Any, any of you guys ever use this? And uh, you, you can knock it if you'd like, but as of this month, I will have been married 13 years, all right? <laughs> Pretty effective, but I do need you to know if you apply that once you're married, it kind of works in the opposite effect, right? So if I don't call her now for four to five days, it, it doesn't work. Um, I'm into other kinds of secrets these days. Now that I'm a dad, I'm learning how to dad. I'm a 40-year-old man. Uh, I'm into secret sauces. I'm really into secret barbecue sauces, the secret sauce on some ribs or some uh, pork shoulders. That's when I feel closest to God when I'm smoking meat. Uh, true story. So I'm into that. I'm into secret parking spots like down at Wrigley. Like a buddy will tell you like, dude, there's this one parking spot on the street where you don't have to pay. I'm into, I'm into those kinds of secrets. Uh, some of you are into all kinds of secret tactics to help you feel healthy. Uh, you might say it's a bath bomb. I won't make you raise your hand, but you're like, how did he know? Yeah, it's this bath bomb. You'd say that's it. Uh, or it's essential oils which could be every hand raised right now. It's like the, the essential oil like revolution. It doesn't matter if I have a broken leg. Kelly's saying you just need a little bit of this, uh, I don't know, peppermint oil. It'll fix it, right? Um, but there is, there is a secret that so many are into right now. I, I don't know if you can resonate with this. It's, it's this stuff. Anyone into this stuff? I knew it. I knew it. You're like, yep, doesn't matter, man. You can have the plague. If you drink some of that, like you will be cured. And it's not that I'm not into that. I do shots of that. Um, but I, I'm more into this kind of apple cider uh, this time of year. <laughs> and I just say that kind of can cure what ails you as well. It's apple cider donut season. Glory to God. I bought a box this past week and I wrote in big print for dad only. Do not touch. Uh, I'm very territorial about my apple cider donuts. And, and this is what Paul is getting at, not secret handshakes, not any kind of secrets like that. But this is what Paul says. He said, I've learned the secret, look at this next part, of living in some, no, 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 what does he say? I've learned the secret of living in, say it with me, in, in every situation. Paul says, I've learned it. I wasn't born with it. I've learned it. It's a learned thing. I've learned the secret of living in every situation situation. What if every situation actually means every situation? Uh, God downloaded this verse to me two weeks ago after I was working out. Wasn't expecting to even preach on this today. He just like nailed me with it early in the morning. I was like, oh my goodness. I've never really thought about it like this. What if every actually means every? What if every situation 
in 2019 means every situation. I've learned, I wasn't born with it, no, I've learned the secret of living in every situation. I want you to think about what your every situation might include. I've got a number of them. The situation of being misunderstood or overlooked or just not fitting in. The situation of being single or single again. The situation of loss, the loss of a girlfriend, the loss of a job, the loss of a pet, the loss of a career. The situation of job promotion, right? So sometimes the hardest times in life aren't when we get the job demotion, it's when we get the job promotion. How do we actually handle that well? The situation of how your dream has turned into a nightmare. The situation of being a parent with young kids. You've waited so long to be a mom or a dad, and now you are one, and you're like, ooh, I didn't read the fine print on this. I... Uh, I didn't realize that I wouldn't sleep, right? Some of you are there, don't raise your hand, but like you can't remember the last time you woke up feeling rested. It's because you really haven't slept in months, right? What if every situation actually includes that situation of sleep deprivation? The situation of being the parent of a teenager, you used to know them, and then they became a teenager, and you're like, "Uh, what happened to my child? Uh, We used to snuggle. And now they're like, no, Dad, no, 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 no. Uh, like, what, what happened to your child? Now they're a teenager. And you're like, man, what if that actually could include parenting a teenager? The situation of being a grandparent. And some of you grandparents, we have a lot of grandparents in our church. One of your challenges is learning how to connect with your grandchild. And you're like, is that even possible? Can I even connect with them? What if that situation even includes that situation? It could be the situation of being a single parent. Uh, You are the heroes in many ways in my life. I just salute you and honor you, single parents in our church. What if it's that situation, and it could even include that? It could be the situation of chronic pain. You can't remember the last time you woke up without pain. What if every situation means every situation? Paul says, I've learned the secret. No matter what you have or where you are, no matter what you're doing, I've learned the secret of living, he says, not existing. Now, everyone kind of knows how to exist. He says, no, I've learned the secret of living in every situation. He continues to give us a little more detail, whether it is with a full stomach, I prefer that, I love to eat, or an empty stomach with plenty, and Paul knew what it was like to have plenty or little. He says, guys, I've, I've learned the secret. I've learned the secret. Uh, something that I found really, really unhelpful is when I try to encourage someone in an area of their life that I have pretty much no experience in. And this is something God brought back to my memory this week when I was writing this message. Um, When Kelly was giving birth to our two daughters, especially the first one, I remember being bedside and I was trying to coach Kelly. And I'm like, babe, I get it. I get it. Um, Two days in high school football, like, I I know, I get it. I couldn't feel my legs either. Uh, It was hot. Um, I just had to keep pushing through and <laughs> and Kelly would close her eyes and she would pray and I thought she was praying for the pain to go away but in hindsight I think she was praying that God would cause me to stop talking right <laughs> and and then with both of our kids uh, into the delivery room her sister her older sister uh, walked in and her sister is a legend uh, Krisa if you're watching this you are a legend in my book uh, her sister is a labor and delivery nurse so she's like given not she's given birth to three of her own but she's helped deliver like hundreds and hundreds of babies And so in walks older sister, and in that moment, I became um, uh, very um, irrelevant. (laughs) And so in that moment, I just kind of like walk over to the corner, and and I'm still coaching from the corner. Like, keep your head in the game, right? (laughs) We're going to win state. Uh, Like things that just don't make sense, right? And yet Creesa, because she understood her coaching, it landed. Yes, my presence mattered, and I was trying hard. But when her sister walked into the room, and when her sister said, you can do this, and I'd been saying the same thing, it just landed totally different. Why? Well, it's because she had experienced it herself. And I just think it's important for us to know who it is that's writing these words. That when he says, I've learned the secret of living in every situation, I think it's important to know the resume of what he means when he says every situation. Let me just read quickly through it. You can turn there if you'd like, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 27. This is just kind of a real quick highlight reel. Uh, A lot isn't even included into this list, but this is what Paul writes, the one that's writing Philippians 4. He says, "Uh, I've been whipped times without number. I've faced death again and again. He says, five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. If you've seen Passion of the Christ, when he was getting his back torn to pieces, that's what's going on there. 
Three times I've been beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, and this has nothing to do with drugs, just so you know. Scholars believe that he was stoned so tremendously that, in fact, he died, and, and there was a miracle, perhaps, that he was raised back. He was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea, and I complained when my flight's delayed. I'm like, no one gets my life. His flight's delayed. Uh, Paul said, no, I, well, I think I might get that. I've worked hard and long, verse 27, and during many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty, and I've often gone without food. I've shivered in the cold. All right, this is especially relevant over the next few months. Without enough clothing, though, to keep me warm. So when that guy writes the words, I've learned the secret of living in every situation, guess who's listening? This guy right here. I, I think of the things that include my situations, then I read his situation. I'm saying, if he learned the secret of living in every situation, then that means that I need to learn the secret as well. I need to lean in. I need to listen from this guy that is writing, being inspired by God himself. And so my question is, 9 a.m., do you want to know what the secret is? It's a pretty long intro. Do you want to know what the secret is? This is interactive. You could say yes or you're not sure. Okay, all right. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Gosh, all right. Uh, so, th so this is the secret. Paul goes on to say, here it is. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. The title of this talk is The Secret to Everything. He doesn't say I can do some things. He says I can do everything. Now this doesn't mean if you're five foot two, if you just do this through Christ, you're gonna play in the NBA, okay? That's making the Bible say what you want it to say, all right? Chances are that's probably not gonna happen, all right? But when it comes to the stuff of life, when it comes to the circumstances in your life, when life is coming at you, when it feels like life is happening to you, Paul is writing, listen, I've experienced it, I've been through it, I've seen it, I've felt it, I know what it's like. And he's saying, listen, I know the secret now. I've learned it, and it is that I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. And I think part of learning the secret for us is seeing what Paul doesn't say in just this short little verse. Here's what Paul doesn't say. He doesn't write, I can do everything away from Christ. Now, I know you wouldn't raise your hand and say, you know what, yeah, I actually prefer to live my life away from Christ. I, I don't think it's that obvious. I don't think it's that overt. Oftentimes it's subtle, but I want you to know if you feel as though life has not been working, I just want you to ask yourself, is it because just maybe you've been living your life away from Christ? John 15 talks about how God is the vine and Jesus says, listen, I am the vine, right? And if you remain in me, connected to me, doing life with me and through me, you'll bear much fruit. He says, apart from me, it's just not going to work out. You, you can do nothing, Jesus says. And I want to ask you, is that how you've been running your life? It's away from Christ. And it's not that you don't believe in God. It's just that you're not asking God to be part of every single part of your life. Most people, especially in this context, believe in God. Right? There's few that don't, I'm sure. Most people in the past almost eight and a half years of leading this church, most people believe in God. But at the same time, many people live life away from God. Right? They don't want him to get too involved in their life. Right? They don't want to fully give over permission to God in every area of their life. So they just kind of live away from Christ. Notice what Paul also doesn't write. I can do anything around Christ. He doesn't write that either. I, I can relate to this so often. Uh, it's a step closer to the right direction. We're, we're at least now living our life around Christ. For some of you, uh, you're now here, you know, at least two Sundays out of the month, maybe one Sunday out of the month, and that's a step in, the, in, in a healthy, good, great direction. I would argue that. Be careful. You don't want to go every week, though, because the messages aren't as good every week, so it's good you're spacing it out. Um, it, but you're part of church, man, and, and you've told me, you're like, John, I never thought that I'd actually be part of a church and want to go to church, even invite my friends to a church. Something new is happening in your faith, and that's a really good thing. And you, and you would say, perhaps, that, yeah, you're starting to live your life in a new way, and what that means is you're living your life around Christ. He's invited to the party. All right, this kind of reminds me of myself when I was a teenager. I lived with my father and mother 
But let's just use my dad for an example. Um, As a teenager, I lived around my dad. I lived in the same house with my dad. But as a teenager, I was convinced my dad had no idea what life was about. He just didn't know anything. It's amazing how much you don't know, Dad. Now, of course, I wouldn't say that because then I'd be living outside, and I preferred to live indoors. And, and, but I lived around my dad, and now in hindsight, it's pretty amazing how much my dad grew and developed between the ages of 16 and 22. When I turned 22, I'm like, Dad, great job. Like, you've really been growing and developing. Way to go. Uh, the truth is my dad didn't change, but I started to change. And I just want to ask you the question, are you living your life around Christ? It's not a bad thing, but there is a better thing that Paul's getting at. He said, there's actually a better thing. If you're living your life around Christ, it doesn't mean that life won't work. It just means that life won't always work. That's what it means. And so he says, you just got to do some inventory. Only you would know, or your spouse, are you living around Christ? He says, it's not a bad thing, but there's a better thing. He says, if you want to know the secret that I've learned... Here it is. It's not living away. It's not living around. No, I can do everything. Say it with me. I can do everything. Through Through is the secret. Through Christ is the game changer. This works seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. When you're hungry or when you have plenty to eat. When you're crushing it or when you're being crushed. He's saying if you want to know the secret, it's right here. It is living Through Christ, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Now, I want to give you a bit of good news and some challenging news. Um, The good news is this. The application of this teaching is something you and I are already really good at. In fact, I'd say that we're great at, and that is living your life through something. That's the good news. You don't have to learn how to live your life through something. You've been doing it your entire life, okay? Okay? So that's the good news. So just take a deep breath. What I'm about to challenge you with is something you're already very good at. You and I have mastered the art of living our lives through things. The question is, what are we living our life through? So so that's the question. And so this past week, I was just thinking through a number of different things that we live our life through. And I don't know why I started with the letter C. It's just the way my brain works and I was walking with my dog, and I just started thinking about all these different things that start with the letter C. I have eight of them, all right? And I just want to work through pretty quickly all eight of these, and I want to ask you, is this thing that I'm about to read, one of these, something that you are actively living your life through? We'll start with your career. Have you noticed that no one needed to teach you how to live your life through your career? Did you know, anyone notice that? And maybe it's just for us driven types, and that's certainly me. My whole, I've been like this since I was a kid. You know, goal setter, trying to change the world every week by the end of the day on Friday. No, no one ever had to teach me this. No one ever sat me down and said, John, um, I want to teach you uh, how to live your life through your career. It might be your craft, but through your career. In my case, I'll, I'll really spiritualize it and, and call it my calling. Then, then I can get off the hook. Are you living your life through your career? And you might say back to me, uh, yeah, and it's working. And I'd say, yeah, it might be working right now. But what happens if we have another 2008? What happens if your company has a different direction they want to go? What happens if your clients just, I don't know, tomorrow get tired of you? Then what? You say, yeah, I guess it may not be the best strategy for my life to live through being my career. How about this next one? This is really going to offend some. Uh, living your life through your country. All right, so um, permission to offend some of you real quick. All right, I love you guys, but this is going to, you might throw something at me. You spend more time watching Fox News than you do with your Father in Heaven. You're way more aware of Fox News than what's actually written in the Word of God. All right, don't throw anything. I'm not done yet. Those of you that love CNN, you're way more familiar with CNN. Is it, I'm looking at you guys as if I know you watch. I don't know what you guys watch, right? I'm just, just work with me. This is a, this is a communication thing. Um, it's it's uh, you know, the time of year where I don't like to go on Facebook because I see what I think many of you worship, which is our country. 
Now, don't get me wrong. I love, I really do, our country. I've traveled the world. It makes me love America even more. I put my flag out. I honor my buddies that are veterans. My dad is a veteran. But there is a difference between loving and appreciating and worship. Your candidate, whoever that might be, is not God. And that's actually good news. All right, so I'm just, just, I mean, we're about to go into like political season and on Facebook. I just need you to check yourself. Are, like, is your anchor? All right, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. You're not liking that. All right. I'm going to get some emails on that one. Um, this next one, let me offend myself on this next one. Um, are you living your life through your coffee? Who writes that? Who comes up with that? It's ridiculous. It's stupid. Who came up with that? Um, so maybe it's not coffee. You're like, oh, yes. Um, how about Cabernet? Let me keep going. <laughs> Things will start with the letter C. It's, it's uh, Coors Light. Ooh. You're like, John, I, it's, when those mountains are blue, man, I just, it's, I don't know, man. I, <laughs> now, before we become a, a church that I don't want to be a part of, um, let me just be clear. Like, there's a difference between living life with something and through something, okay? So this afternoon, when you're at wherever and you see someone from our church having a Coors Light, like, see, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Going to hell, that guy right there, all right? <laughs> Hold on, Relax. For our high school students, uh, maybe it's not uh, something you drink, but it's something you play, Call of Duty. I wanted to put in Fortnite, but it doesn't start with the letter C. There's a difference between living with and living through. Uh, This next one's a big one for all of us, uh, living your life through your checkbook. And... A really powerful Old Testament verse I want to read to you, and it really helps explain everything I'm trying to get at here. Jeremiah was a lot more offensive than me. Uh, He was an Old Testament prophet. He didn't care, all right? So he just didn't care. Uh, Sometimes I care too much. Jeremiah didn't care. So this is what Jeremiah says, inspired by God. My people, God says to Jeremiah to tell the folks. Uh, My people, God says to Jeremiah to tell the folks, have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. One of, one of the most impactful verses, I think, in all of the Bible. Broken cisterns. This is the list I'm going through. This is the list I'm going through. They're broken cisterns. They're, they're not, it's not that they're not water. It's just, it's just that they're not living water. It's not that they don't have water. It's just that they can't hold water. And those are different things. And so God is saying, you got to check yourself. If you are still feeling as though, man, there's just like, like, God, where are you? God, why can't life seem to work? I think it's probably because you're not living your life through Christ. It doesn't mean that life gets easy. Many times it gets harder. But you will find that you can actually do everything. You can face everything. You can move through everything when you're doing that through Christ. It's through your checkbook. A few more things. Through your crush. And uh, this could be your girlfriend. It could be your boyfriend. Um, it could be your spouse. Uh, this is Kelly's biggest challenge, obviously. <laughs> She'll be at the 12 today, so we'll make sure and emphasize that one. Uh, through your comfort, I think this is probably the, one of the biggest ones. And you know, this morning, I, I was just thinking about how much I love this church and how much I love you guys. Uh, I, you know, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, I, I, I gave my life, my 30s, to you guys. And uh, I'm barely 40, and I'm giving a lot of my 40s to you guys, hopefully less than my 30s. Um, Right, wrong, or indifferent, it's just true. And I did it, maybe not totally pure motives, but at least 80% pure, because I I love you guys. And um, I want to see you grow, flat out. And one of the things we've agreed on around here is that growth begins at the end of your comfort zone. And... Maybe I'm unrealistic, but I just don't understand why the boiler room isn't full. We have thousands of people now that go to this church. And that room holds, what, Brad, 30? So here's the thing. Go in there for 10 minutes, right? Like just 
Dip your toe in the water. Just get a little taste. Prayer is more caught than taught. Get in there. Uh, you got plans today. That's fine. Next week. I want to see it overflowing. Why would I want to see it? He's all about, uh, here's why I want to see it overflowing. Because if you can learn how to pray in there, you can pray at home. You can pray in your workplace. You can pray with your team. You can pray in the locker room. You can pray when you're walking around. You can just pray, and you need to know how to talk to your father. I don't know how you can live your life through Christ if you don't know how to talk to Christ. So I don't know what else to say about that. It's getting better. It's just not where it needs to be. Okay, uh, The 12. Um, there is like close to 300 people that have given up their seat. And it's more than that. It's their routine. At the 9 or the 1030. It's incredible. It's incredible what is happening at the 12. We have brand new people every week now, especially at the 1030. After that's full, they'll probably migrate down to the 9. But I just want to challenge you again. This isn't for everybody, but if you want to Maybe move beyond some comfort. That could be two options for you. Growth begins at the end of your comfort zone. I gotta keep moving. Uh, two more, through your church. Um, if I haven't let you down yet, if our staff hasn't let you down yet, that's because you're new. <laughs> Hang in there, it's coming. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's gonna be great, okay? And, you know, um, I'm, I'm one person. I can be in one place at one time. And... And the same is true for a lot of our leaders. And so we're just going to let you down. Uh, the church is going to let you down. because I don't know why Jesus did it this way. I, I wouldn't have done it this way. But he, he decided that the bride of Christ would be led by a bunch of imperfect knuckleheads like Tommy. You know, and it's, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why he drew it up that way, but he did. All right, so here's the thing. I, I really like that you like mission, but please don't fall in love with mission church. Please don't do that. The, the, the mission of our church isn't to help you find and follow mission. It's not. We know mission is part of that. We want you to find and follow Christ, right? So I'm not against mission. I kind of I kind of like mission a lot, okay? But this is just really important. One more, and you're going to hate this one. Um, through your children. I think this is one of the biggest deceptions the enemy has convinced American parents on, is living their life through their children. So if you don't believe me that we're already good at living through things, Go to a youth football game. Come on, Johnny! Like, I get on the, you know, when I used to watch my nephew play, the intensity, I'm like, bro, I'm sorry to break it to you, but Johnny is like four or five, he weighs 80 pounds. He's not playing college football, dude. It's just not gonna happen, man. It's okay. Like, just ease up, man. Let him have fun out there. Interesting uh, statistics, uh, divorce. A lot of times it's happening, um, when parents become empty nesters. And there's, I think, a number of reasons for that, but one of the biggest reasons is because they've lived their life through their children and then their children aren't there anymore. And then they're stuck with their spouse and they don't know their spouse. They really don't. And some don't wanna put in the work to know their spouse and fall in love with them again, so they bail and, and start over. Um, I see this a lot and it's, it's a tension for sure. Yeah, we, we need to love our kids and they're the, yeah. Are you living through them? There's a little word cloud with all eight of these. What are you living your life through? What are you living your life through? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to just create some sacred space. I don't make it sacred. The presence of God makes it sacred. And I want you guys to do some business with God. All right, we're not going to be here for 30 more minutes, but maybe like five, maybe 10, I don't know. Uh, the band is going to play a song. It's been a, just a great song that I've had on repeat during my walks, and it's just kind of leading me back to Jesus quite a bit. As I was working through those eight things, one of them really stuck out to you. And what I want you to do is um, own it, surrender that to God. Maybe yours wasn't on the list. Um, but you know what it is. What are you living your life through? And if the answer is anything or anyone but Christ, it's not that life won't work, it's just that life won't always work. And some of you are feeling that right now. And so what I'd like for you to do, you don't have to do anything, but what if you were to like old school, get on your face before God, get on your knees, turn this into an altar. We got plenty of room up here. 
As the band plays, maybe you need to receive communion in the back corner. Maybe you need to stand. Maybe you need to sit. I don't know. But when God spoke this message to me, I just knew that this is something for all of us. It's a time for us to do some inventory. And so we're going to invite the Spirit of God and Tommy's going to sing. And As God speaks to your heart, I want you to surrender, whatever that thing is. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you for these timeless words, God, that you inspired and authored through the author of Paul to us. So incredible to think that we can learn the secret as well. The secret of living in every situation. That we can do everything through Christ who gives us strength. And I'm asking God right now for your presence to be thick in this room. Some people right now will recognize that you've been living away from Christ. You, you have yet to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And, and today is your, your moment, your opportunity to say yes to him, to give him the keys of your life. Others, you, you've been living around, but not through, and you know that. And so God, I, I'm asking for a spirit of freedom and conviction that you would move powerfully. Powerful.